thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, today I'll be talking about the uh, about our experience building enterprise wireless with Capsman. Uh, my name is Ahmad Mardiansha, and I'm from Indonesia. Uh, the agenda that I'll be talking today, uh, there'll be introductions. Uh, I'll be talking about what is the enterprise wireless is, uh, about the concept of uh, Capsman, uh, how Capsman's work, uh, some Capsman features that is uh, I think uh, is useful for your network, several Capsman tips, and then maybe we can write something. Uh, for a suggestion for Microtech. Uh, about ourselves, uh, we are from Indonesia, uh, based in Bandung. Um, we are certified partner for Microtech and others. I, I don't have to say it here. So this is Microtech, right? Uh, we have also uh, our own products, uh, um, GLC Radius Manager, and then we do a regular event webinar every two weeks. About myself, uh, my name is Ahmad. I'm based in Bandung. I'm Linux user since 1999. Uh, certified uh, consultant, uh, trainer, uh, and also teacher in the university. Uh, past experience uh, uh, mostly related with the microtics, um, uh, like uh, set up um, uh, microtic uh, bandwidth management. Um, set up wireless network, and then also uh, migration, doing migration from bridge network wireless to routed network. Uh, about our school, Telkom University, it's located in Bandung, and um, has uh, seven faculties, 27 schools, engineering, communications, computing, and uh, we run Microtech Academy in our school. So started in 2013. Uh, the curriculum embedded into uh, our official curriculum, I mean, uh, the microtech curriculum is embedded into ours. And then uh, uh, at the end of the semester, students will have a chance to get the um, uh, certifications for uh, microtech MTCNA. Uh, about microtech Indonesia, it's very popular products. Uh, I think because of uh, early adopters since 2000, early 2000s. I think the first router boards already in Indonesia, I think, <laughs> at the time. So I was using Microtech since 2007. At the time, the version were uh, 2.7, yeah, uh, quite old. And then uh, uh, there are so many Microtech Academy in Indonesia. And then lots of training classes, uh, biggest mom in the world, more than 3,000 people coming. And then very active community in the forum, uh, uh, WhatsApp, in the uh, Facebook group. And then uh, if you ask a network engineer there if they don't know Microtech, and then they will think, do you not know Microtech? Where have you been? Yeah. <laughs> so because it's very popular in this, almost in every corner you can see Microtech products, uh, almost in every uh, hotels, they use uh, Microtech hotspot for um, a captive portal. So, uh, let's get back to the topic. So, today I'll be talking about the enterprise wireless. So, the first thing I need to define is what is the enterprise wireless. So, enterprise wireless usually indoor uh, on access points. Uh, the, uh, the access network that is connected directly to the end devices. So it's uh, PTMP, and then uh, it's centralized FCAPs, fault management, uh, configuration management, authentication, performance, and security. And then so usually enterprise, uh, it has enterprise features like load balancing, uh, uh, better mobility, security, high ability, authentication, uh, for example, band steering, and then, uh, oh, I put it there twice. Uh, example uh, of Enterprise net wireless uh, offices, uh, campus, or hotel. So uh, about the Capsman. So so since Microtech released uh, Capsman, so that means uh, Microtech enters the uh, wireless uh, enterprise market. I think. 
So uh, what Capsman does is uh, it offers centralized platform for managing access points. So previously, before Capsman, so you have to log in to access point one by one and then configure one by one. Okay, you can do it uh, uh, centralized using a script. So uh, like uh, you set up a script and then the script will go log in to every device and then do configuration for you. But with Capsman, it's more easier. Uh, Capsman is uh, was available since uh, uh, version 6.11, uh, 2014. Now it's Capsman version 2. And then uh, uh, it's recommended version. So uh, better if you use this one, not the version 1. Uh, the concept is you have CAP, controlled access point, and then you have CAPSman, the CAPS manager. Okay, so for example, this here, uh, you have CAP, CAP, and CAP, and then here, you have the uh, CAPSman. So one, uh, one uh, software uh, that controls uh, the access point. So about the CAPSman and CAP connectivity, so it depends. Uh, you can use a layer based on layer two or layer three. So I personally recommend to use layer three because uh, I think it's more stable. So if you use layer two, it means that the access point and then the capsman should be in the same network, same broadcast network. But if you have, uh, if you use layer three, it's more flexible. You can put the capsman in the uh, cloud and then controls all of your access point. Right, so I think uh, layer three is better. About the configuration concept, uh, if you go to Capsman, so there is a Capsman menu on the left. So the concept is like this. So you have uh, a serious stack of configurations where the higher configuration, you can override the previous configuration. So you have a stack of configuration about the channel, the data path, security, and rates. Okay, so so on each of them, uh, you create a profile. Okay, and then you combine the profiles into a configuration here. And then you apply this configuration into a CAP interface through the provisioning rules. Okay, so uh, create profile, 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 profile. Okay, the red one here. And then you create another profiles in uh, configurations, which consists of the previous configuration. And then after that, after it provision to the uh, uh, interface, and then you can override the previous configurations here. So here's the ultimate configurations, okay, on CAP interface. Okay, so this is uh, one example how you define the uh, profile of channels, data path, security, and rates. Okay, uh, one example, for example, uh, channels, you define the profile for channel one, two, three, and data path, for example, you can define for uh, local forwarding or not. Uh, security configuration, for example, you define the um, password uh, for your network. And then here is the rates, okay? Uh, what kind of uh, uh, rates that available in your network? So here, uh, after the you set up the uh, uh, lowest one here, channels, data path, con security configuration rates, and then on top on top of that, you can put in the configurations. So this is another profiles that consists of previous profile, okay? So this is a configuration name, uh, master AP1. And then inside this, you have a profile for uh, data rates, channel, dat data path, and then security. Okay, so it's a stack of configuration. So you can override the previous configurations uh, on this configuration, right? And then we have provisioning rules here. So every network interface uh, is considered as one device. So if you have one router board that has two uh, wireless LAN, so that means there will be a two interfaces. So one provisioning uh, for each interface. For example, here I have a dual 
uh, wireless LAN device. So one is only operating on uh, 2.4 gigahertz, and the other one is operating on 5 gigahertz. How do I distinguish on provisioning rules here? So I choose uh, supported modes. Uh, here, I for 2.4 gigahertz, I choose G or GN, and for 5 gigahertz, I choose AC. This is how I distinguish whether this device is 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. And then um, we also set up, uh, so we have configuration, and then we want to apply this configuration to the device. So based on what you apply this configuration. So here, um, I apply the configuration based on the identity of the device. So here, I have a device, and then the identity of the device is GP minus AP minus 1.3. So I have two. Uh, first, a configuration for the first interface that is operating on 2.4 gigahertz. The second one here is for 5 gigahertz. Okay, and then uh <coughs> it's looking for on this IP range, and then it has master configuration for 2.4 gigahertz and then 5 gigahertz. And then if you want to add uh, a virtual access point, more SSID, and then yes, you can. Uh, you can put it in the slave configuration. Okay, a little bit complex. And then here's the difference between master and slave configuration. Master is uh <coughs> master configuration is used to set up basic um, uh, wireless settings like uh, channel. Uh, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, and then channel width, uh, TX power, uh, those configuration will be taken from the master configuration. Uh, for slave configurations, is for additional, usually is for additional SSID. Uh, and then if uh, the uh, wireless parameters already there, it will be ignored because it will use uh, configuration from the master. So after you provision, and then the Capsuman will create the uh, interface. So this is how interface looks like. This is the interface tab. And then here is the master interface, where the basic uh, essential uh, wireless configuration is, is done. And then here is the uh, slave interface for additional SSID. So we can run multiple SSID on one uh, physical interface. Okay, so uh, uh, this is an example of uh, the uh, master configuration. For example, uh, the channel, uh, channel width, and uh, the uh, TX power. For example, this one is uh, 17 dBm. And then we have also access list. Uh, access list is, is used to control how the end device connect to your wireless network. So here, here you can, uh, there are three uh, categories here, uh, clients matching, and then actions, the one in the middle, and then connection parameters. Okay, so uh, for you, you can reject the clients or accept the clients, or you can uh, query the radius, uh, whether you have to ask the radius whether um, this client is allowed or not. For example, if you want to allow uh, clients that is based on the MAC address, usually you query to the radius because radius has the database of those MAC addresses. Okay, uh, several features from the uh, Capsman. So first is load balancing. So I think this is very useful. For example, you have in this uh, room, you have three access points. Without load balancing, uh, that could be like this. So in one access point, there are 15 users connected to that. And then the other two, uh, they just uh, ad other people only connect to one, and then the third access point connect to one user. Okay, So with load balancing, uh, we can set up these three uh, access point uh, belong to uh, one load balancing group. 
So uh, if s uh, so, it it tries to balance the total number of connected devices on each access point. So before it was like this. So one access point uh, handle many users. Now it's um, already balanced where uh, each access point uh, has a similar number of uh, connected users. Um, this one is, is, I think this is very useful. Uh, next feature is roaming. So um, um, enterprise wireless usually requires you to have a seamless mobility. So um, you have a very large network where a user can roam from one access point to the other access point. So unfortunately, the decisions uh, for moving to the new access points is uh, depends on the device itself. So unlike GSM, uh, LTE, where the control of your uh, mobility is, uh, uh, is based on the, is located in the uh, uh, central, not on your uh, phone, uh, but on Wi-Fi, it's, it's not. So it's up to you. Okay, so that's why most often we can see that you already moved to a new access point, but you're still attached to the old access point, which is not good. Okay, so for that one, we can set up rules uh, so that the access point can disconnect you based on the signal level. So if you're going f away, so your signal level will be lower. And then we can set up, for example, if you are lower than minus uh, 80 dB, and then I will disconnect you, okay, from the first access point. So, okay, you already disconnect. So what you will do, what your devices do, will uh, you will connect to the new access point. So uh, uh, we hope that when you connect to the new access point, you will connect to the stronger one, not from the, uh, not uh, connect to the old one. Okay, so this is how we deal with the roaming. Okay, and then here we can uh, uh, set up roaming uh, rules in the uh, access list and the capsman. Uh, next is caps, uh, data path. Uh, on the left here is uh, a local forwarding through bridge. So traffic from the uh, user first will go to the capsman first and then go to the uh, destination. So all traffic will go to the capsman first. Okay, so this is the bridge mode. Okay, so uh, as a consequence, the device that running capsman must have a very um, powerful uh, box. So you cannot run uh, <laughs> this uh, capsman box with the the one that the um, reception gives you. So it's too small. It cannot handle lots of traffic. Okay, and then when you do that, the CPU will go higher and then uh, most likely you'll be uh, disconnected, yeah, just because of uh, uh, it requires lots of processing, okay? So other alternative, you can use local forwarding. So that means uh, your cap here, uh, the user that is connected to your, uh, to one of your cap will go directly to, based on your uh, forwarding uh, plane here, okay? So that's the difference. So, yeah, so uh, which one is the best? So it's up to you, okay? Uh, this decision you can set up in the uh, capsman uh, on the data path, okay? So you can take wha whether you um, choose a bridge or you can activate the local forwarding. So here, because I don't want to, I don't have the, uh, um, a powerful box for a capsman, so I choose a local forwarding equals to yes. So traffic will not, the, the data traffic will not touch the capsman, only the uh, management traffic goes to capsman. Uh, next is uh, VLAN. So with capsman, we can set up VLAN. So here on the left uh, is no VLAN, and then on the right here, we have set up VLAN. So for example, this SSID will use this VLAN. So all user that is connected to that SSID will use this VLAN. So before 
So usually Capsman has two interfaces, right? So first interface is a wireless interface where uh, end user connect. And then the other interface is the uh, wired interface where the traffic goes to the other uh, destination. So when when user connect, when user send the data through a wireless interface and then will be forwarded to the uh, wired interface, when the when the packet leave the uh, wired interface, the Capsuman will add a tag, fill and tag on that. Right, that's how it works. <coughs> so for that one, you can use uh, settings here on Capsuman. You can set up uh, VLAN mode or uh, use tag, and then uh, define the uh, user ID. Oh, sorry, the VLAN ID, sorry. Uh, I was a little bit jet lag, sorry. Uh, yeah, VLAN ID, yeah, not user ID. So uh, n next slide is the uh, 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 user base VLAN. Yeah, okay, this one. So uh, another variation is you can say uh, this user will be using this VLAN. User number two will use VLAN number two. User three use VLAN number three. Cool, right? Yeah. So this is how it works. So uh, uh, working as a like a previous. So before no VLAN, after it leaves the uh, wired interface, the access point will add a VLAN tag on that. So, but here we need support from radio server. So it cannot be done from the uh, Capsman itself. So Capsman's will ask, hello, uh, there is a user wants to come in. Okay, so I, I need to query to uh, radio server and then the radio server will, okay, this user can log in, can get into the uh, wireless network and then here's the, uh, his uh, VLAN ID. So uh, user one here will use VLAN number 11. User two will use VLAN uh, number 22. Okay. Uh, next is uh, EAP, uh, layer two authentication. So previously, uh, uh, anyone connect to the Amora SSID, right? So uh, with that uh, authentication method, uh, we do authentication on layer seven. So it means that we already log in. Actually, we already log in to the uh, system. We already get the IP address, but we cannot go further. Yes, because we have to do authentication, right? Uh, here is different. The authentication uh, will be done on layer two. Okay, so what was the drawback of uh, if you do authentication on uh, layer seven? Well, because you already get into the network, you already get an IP address, and then actually you can access the access point, right? So, for example, th uh, the, atta the attacker or the, yeah, the attacker, so the bad guy is already in your, um, in your, uh, yeah, nearby, yeah. So already in your network, okay? So they can do the uh, HTTP attack, so your pool, uh, they can exhaust your uh, DHCP pool so that the new user will not get IP address. So with this method, we do we do the layer two authentication. So it means that uh, when they uh, try to get into the network, uh, there will be a username password they have to fill in. If they pass, and then they will get IP address. Okay, so it's done on layer two, not on layer seven. Okay, so for doing that, we can use here uh, WAP EAP, and then encryption is here. EAP method pass through, and then we need also support from the radius. Okay, so again, radius. <laughs> uh, next is Mac-based authentications. Okay, we can do that also with Capsman, but also we need support from the radius because the one that has the database is the radio server. Okay, so the way we do is we can set up an access rule here, access list, and then uh, we can set up if you want to connect to the uh, this SSID. Uh, hold a moment. I will ask the radius. If the radius say yes, okay, you can log in. Okay. Okay. Several tips. Uh, Capsman uh, for cap. 
uh, you can use auto uh, certificate. So um, without certificate, you can uh, be uh, the cap can be managed by the capsman. But uh, for stability, uh, better if you use a certificate here, and then you lock that cap into particular capsman. Okay, so uh, you just pick a request here, and then automatically it will uh, ask a certificate from the capsman. So capsman will generate the uh, certificate automatic, automatically, and then uh, push the certificate back to the cap. Uh, it's uh, uh, for stability. I really suggest you to do this one. Uh, next is for high availability. So what happens if the cap cannot contact Capsman? A user cannot log in. Even though user already log in, but because there is a connection problem between cap and the Capsman, will be disconnected. So all SSID will be gone. Okay. So I think uh, better if you use more than one Capsman. So if one gone here, and then the, the cap can contact the other one. Okay. Uh, next feature is uh, upgrade cap version. So the cap, uh, it is recommended to use the latest version of. Oh, okay. I have 15 minutes. Uh, it is uh, recommended to use the latest version of Rotor OS. Okay. And then for that one, um, you need to upgrade the cap, right? Uh, but with this feature, uh, the one that's upgrading the cap is the capsman. So we uh, put the package on uh, a capsman, and then capsman will upgrade the cap. Okay. Uh, next is wireless survey. So uh, I think this is very important as well uh, to do wireless survey on your uh, wireless coverage because it will give you an idea about the uh, how n how the network is 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 running yeah so because because when you see here uh, after you do the wireless survey you can see oh this area has a strong signal but this area is not this area has interference this area is not so with this wireless survey, you can verify the wireless uh, parameters that you already configured. Okay, okay. Uh, I really strong, uh, um, yeah, do this one. Okay, wireless survey. Uh, next is uh, you can enable client isolation and then port isolation. So, client isolation means uh, one wireless client cannot. Uh, have a connect uh, have a communication with other station so why do we disable this because uh, when the client connect to the uh, other uh, stations so first uh, it will connect to the access point and then from the access point to the destination so that process is two steps and then each step will take the air time so the way we communicate using wireless is like you have a time slot, okay? So the more time slot you take, the other uh, stations uh, cannot have um, uh, more time slot to to do communications, okay? So airtime in in uh, wireless communication is very very crucial. So better if you save that. So uh, by uh, disabling unnecessary activity like uh, client to client uh, communication uh, and also so if you already enable the um, client isolations but this uh, uh, one client from the uh, first access point can be able to talk to the client other client that is connected to the other access point okay so for blocking that we can use the port isolations uh, other tip is do not put server on wireless networks. It really, really uh, make the performance down. For example, if you have a, a print server connected to the wireless, 
please don't do that. Yeah. So yeah, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> so so I was wondering why the the uh, the performance of this access point is really really bad, and then I found out that okay, uh, there is a wireless printer connected to that. So and then we disable the uh, connection. <laughs> And then all the server should connect to the wired uh, cable. Okay, so that was the client isolation and port isolation. Uh, smooth mobility for the clients. Okay, so uh, from layer two, we can set up the smooth mobility by setting up the threshold for uh, mobility, right? So we have discussed it before. But on layer three, we need to have a support for that. So uh, if you design uh, your uh, wireless network, for example, access point one is using um, uh, network one, access point two using uh, different uh, networks. So it means that when you connect to access point one, you get uh, DHCP, go to access point two, another DHCP uh, request again. So that one, I think uh, it's not recommended better if you use the uh, flat network. So all access point will use the uh, same uh, uh, layer three network, or you can use uh, VLAN. Yeah, so each user will use a VLAN. So that, that way uh, we can have consistent uh, connection, uh, layer three connections for the client. Uh, next feature is uh, flexible provisioning. So as you can see here, uh, provisioning rules ha uh, support regex, regular expression, so that you can you can uh, set up pattern for uh, your cap identity, so that when capsman C, oh okay, so this pattern means I have to do this one. Okay. Um, next suggestion for Microtik. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So uh, I think uh, better if uh, Microtik set up um, uh, or create a new feature for automatic band steering. Band steering is like this. Uh, you have two bands, right? Two gigahertz and five gigahertz. Usually we set up a different SSID. So for example, in two gigahertz, for example, the SSID is Wi-Fi or free Wi-Fi. 5 gigahertz is free Wi-Fi faster. So uh, we try to, yeah, we, <laughs> we try to push people to connect to the 5 gigahertz because it's more clean, right? Yeah, and then the way we push is, uh, yeah, like a social engineering, we put uh, SSID faster. Oh, okay, people see, oh, it's faster, and then try to connect that. Uh, yeah, so we, in the future, perhaps this process can be uh, automatic. Uh, there is no clear rules uh, for that, like other vendors. Um, I don't know, maybe it's their secret. Uh, it's not revealed in the RFC. So uh, I don't know, uh, th the band steering works. So other vendors, they have that band steering, but I don't think it's really work well. Um, because each vendor has his own uh, technique to do the automatic band steering. Uh, perhaps Microtik can do it as well. Uh, next is uh, signal visualization on floor layout. So uh, perhaps I was hoping that maybe it's already will be integrated with the dude. So we have a layout of our um, uh, wireless, like a floor plan, and then we can put uh, this. The access point is here, here, and then uh, we can see the uh, signal visualization. I think that will be cool, right? Uh, it's also useful for checking the uh, wireless settings, okay, to check whether, okay, if I put 20 dB, how far the signal can go, okay. Uh, next is because we have a centralized uh, management of access points, <coughs> perhaps we can do also uh, rock access point detection. So, for example, we set up a, s a uniform SSID. And then the, there is a new SSID that is using the same uh, SSID, a uh, new access point that is using same SSID. 
So with this feature, we can detect, uh, the access point can detect, oh, okay, there is a access point using uh, uh, same SSID, but we don't know this one. So perhaps it's a rock access point located uh, near this access point and then that access point. Uh, integrated with the dude, I think that one will be uh, cool. And then EAP support for uh, on user manager. So currently, um, user manager, you can think it's a radio software where you can uh, uh, put the username and password as a database. Okay, so for authentication, it's fine. You can use user manager. But for um, EAP authentication, it doesn't support because EAP requires a uh, certificate uh, uh, sign. Okay, so you we, uh, from the access point, we need to create a certificate from the uh, Capsman. Uh, from the radius, we also create certificate. So uh, the communication is between the access point and then the radius. Both of them must create certificate. And then uh, the radius, uh, user manager radius, uh, currently doesn't support that. So we need to use other radius. Uh, about the training topics, I think uh, because um, previously Microtik only focus, uh, in my opinion, only focus on the outdoor network. So they built lots of, uh, they produce lots of uh, uh, products uh, that is very good for outdoor environment. But since the uh, Capman's appears, uh, I think better if we s uh, split the uh, training or topics into two parts. So Microtech certified uh, outdoor network, outdoor wireless, or <coughs> uh, next is uh, Microtech uh, certified uh, indoor network, indoor wireless. Uh, so that is focusing on uh, how to use uh, Capsman. Uh, okay, I think that's all. So if you're interested, uh, you can check schedule on uh, our website. Uh, we do also uh, training. And then uh, if you have any questions, you can, okay, yes. Yes. IPv6 or I oh IP phone. Yeah, uh, we test the IP phone uh, about the mo mobility. So uh, we do a, a call, a VoIP call, and then while we are calling, we are moving through the access points. Uh, some tests, uh, the movement is, is really smooth. Uh, we cannot, uh, 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 it's like a, we don't notice we already moved uh, to the new access point, but sometimes uh, there will be a, a silence in uh, two or three seconds or five seconds, and then you can connect again. Okay, yes? Oh, uh, we don't use that. Uh, you mean the one user, uh, one VLAN, like what I explained here. So that one, uh, we don't implement it uh, in our previous project. Uh, that one is for our lab. Yeah, but uh, it is possible. But we haven't uh, implemented in the uh, big scale. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. Oh, the load balancing, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, the load balancing. So previously here, the throughput here for per user is very low here because the air time for every user is, is low because many people are connected to that particular access point, right? So when we do balancing here, uh, the user will get more and more air time. Yeah, so I think uh, that really uh, yeah, did the job. Yeah. 
Yes, number uh, based on the number of uh, user connected users. So it's not depends on the how many bandwidths you are downloading now. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, the feature is very good. Yeah, we use it uh, a lot. Well, if there is no questions, uh, thank you very much. Terima kasih. Uh, thank you for listening.